Hello everyone and welcome to another video of Red Spark Art. I am your host Akai Hibana and today we will talk about the history of Ukiyo-e in a short format. First of all we will present you the origin of Ukiyo-e, his appearance in Japanese culture and his evolution through time. Let's get into it! Woo! Part 1. What is Ukiyo-e? Ukiyo-e is a Japanese art genre which depicts a vast variety of themes such as sumo wrestler, geisha, female beauty, kabuki acta, landscape, fauna and flora, everyday scene, folk history and fairy tale. Then let's talk about the etymology of ukiyo-e, which is full of poetry. In Japanese, the word ukiyo-e is written like this. As you can see, this word is composed of three characters, three kanji. The first kanji is yuki, which means floating. The second kanji is yo, which means world. The third kanji is e, which means picture. When we translate this Japanese word into English, it means picture of the floating world. Now, when we only translate the two first kanji, ukiyo, into English, it means floating world, our transient world. This is a metaphor which is referring to the urban lifestyle, especially the pleasure-seeking aspects of the Edo period in Japan. This is mostly a reference to the red light district of Tokyo during this time period, in which you could find a vast variety of brothel. Some famous ukiyo-e describe the everyday life of this quarter and their habitat. Asar Ryoi celebrated this spirit in the novel Ukiyo-e Monogatari, Tales of the Floating World, in 1661. Quote, Living only for the moment, savouring the moon, the snow, the cherry blossoms and the maple leaves, singing songs, drinking sake and diverting oneself just in floating. Unconcerned by the prospect of imminent poverty, buoyant and carefree, like a gourd carried along with a river current. This is what we call Ukiyo. End quote. Part 2. The History of Ukiyo-e Now let's talk about the prehistory of Ukiyo-e. We can start this genre history from two main inspirations. The first one, the Yamato-e style, which is inspired by the Tang Dynasty painting, and the second one, which is Chinese-inspired Kara-e style. These two inspirations composed most of the style during the Heian period. At that time, art was not common and mostly reserved for religious group and wealthy part of the Japanese society. Now, the birth of Yukio-e is said to be from the late 17th century, through an evolution of the Yamato-e style, which consists of a new style of outline form. Yukio-e was born. This painting, credited to Iwasa Matabe, seems to be the oldest surviving Yukio-e work in the world. There is also an assertion that he was the founder of the Yukio-e genre in Japan. From this time on, the Yukio-e demand kept rising and a new wave of artists began to arrive. Ishikawa Molonobu is credited with the first production of Ukiyo-e woodblock prints. He was a very successful illustrator who worked on a lot of genres such as portraying female beauty. His main treat was to produce a single sheet images which could be used for different purposes such as standalone image. Following the death of Molonobu, prominent new artists started to appear such as Tori Kiyonobu 1, which specialized in kabuki akta, and Ando Kaiketsudo, which specialized in courtesans. We can also count Nishikawa Skenobu, which is known for his high-quality work on courtesan and erotic portrait, and Miyagawa Choshun, which is known for his portrait of everyday life. Now let's talk about Ukiyo-e during the beginning of the 18th century. During the 18th century, we can notice Okumura Masanobu. He was a great entrepreneur and self-promoter. He helped to create a new technique to improve Ukiyo-e making process. One of his most notable innovations is the use of geometrical perspectives in genre. Western style graphical perspective and increased use of printed color were among the innovations Okumura Masanobu claimed. Suzuki Haranobu is to be noted. He realized some very impressive ukiyo-e with their complex design and color. During the creation process of this ukiyo-e, he had to use multiple wood blocks for the multitude of color, up to 12. Here is another artist noticeable for his work on perspective in ukiyo-e prints. This is Utagawa Toyoharu. Next, I will present you the Golden Age of Ukiyo-e during the 18th century. For the Golden Age of Ukiyo-e, we can cite multiple artists, such as Tori Kiyonaga, who specialized in beautiful women on urban scenes. He is known for his large print. In the late 18th century, there is Kitagawa Utamaro, who specialized in beautiful woman drawing with disproportionate head. Then we have to talk about the famous Toshusai Sharak. He was active only during 10 months, yet he had the time to create one of the most famous ukiyo-e. He specialized in portrait of kabuki actor with a great level of realism. Now I will talk about ukiyo-e during the 19th century. 
Here is the appearance of one of the most famous ukiyo-e artists, the legendary Okusai. His work was mostly focused on everyday life, landscape, fauna and flora. We can cite the famous Great Wave of Kanagawa and the 36 views of Mount Fuji. We can also talk about Utagawa Kuniyoshi, who also drew birds and landscape. Yet he is known for his work on hero series Suokuden and Tushingura. Then, to conclude this period, we have to talk about Hiroshige Utagawa, who is considered the greatest rival of Okusai. Like Okusai, he specialized in fauna and flora plus landscape. He is known for his series on the 53 stations of the Tokaido and the 69 stations of the Kisokaido. To continue, I will talk about Ukiyo-e during the late 19th century and through the 20th century. Because of the Meiji Restoration and the westernization of the Japanese society, Ukiyo-e knew a fast decline. This genre was considered more rebound. We can notice Tsukiyoka Yoshitoshi, who is known for his work on horror and gore, from monster to ghost. One of his famous works is called The 100 Aspect of the Moon. We can cite Goyo Ashikuchi for his work on Beautiful Woman. Next there is Shinsu Ito, also known for his work on woman images with a modern style. Then we can cite Asui Kawase for his modern landscape. To finish, I will talk about Ukiyo-e Renaissance during the 21st century thanks to pop culture. Since we are only 20 years into the 21st century, I do not have a lot of information about the famous artists of the present Ukiyo-e world. Therefore, I will present two artists who are trying to spread the Ukiyo-e genre through pop culture. First of all, I can cite Ukiyo-e heroes by Jendari and Dave Bull. Then about a young Japanese artist, Kenji Iwasaki. To conclude, here you have it, a short history of Ukiyo-e through their artists during the different period. We can see that this art genre in terms of popularity is like a wave. It was almost non-existent before the 18th century, then became really popular during the 19th century, to finally decline and almost disappear during the 20th century. Nowadays, there are only a few artists remaining in this genre. Yet, I hope and I will support a rebound for Ukiyo-e in the years to come. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you in the next video. Woo!